How you doing guys and gals? My name's Doug Wilson and this is Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors. This is going to be a client offerings video, but it's going to be a huge one, right? Um, and I tell you, it is, it's like, it's only about, I don't know, 60 degrees here in Pennsylvania, but it's like 100% humidity. It, it's like ridiculous. I'm dripping and dripping and dripping and dripping. Anyway, um, so like this would be a good video to check out everything we do because there's a lot of different techniques designs options a whole bunch of stuff here in these sheath systems so let me, let me look let me, let, let me let you take a look at them real quick all right I'm going to go from left to right. Just going to let you look at them. Then I'll talk about each one. All right. I'll give you a bird's eye. Boom. Some of them have slings. Some don't. Um, you know, he's going to take off a sling if he needs it for another system. That's all. And this... This is for a client in the Philippines. He ordered all these, right? For all these different knives. And if you're watching, I don't like to say names anymore. Some people get upset. <laughs> if you're watching and there's anything missing off of one of these sheath systems, you can let me know about it, but they're gonna get double checked before they leave for California, okay? So, um, so that, that's where they're going first, and then from California, they're being shipped to the Philippines. Or he might be going to pick them up. I don't know. Something like that. Okay, so you guys stick, stick around, and I'll go through all these sheath systems. We'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, so in case some of you are wondering, I get asked this all the time. What knife do you have around your neck, right? This is a Mike Wallace from Wallace Edged Tools Field Mouse. And these just happen to be my favorite scale configuration. G10, uh, CPM 154, so it won't rust. Holds a great edge for a long time, and it's extremely wear resistant. I love this knife, it's very comfortable. It's just the right size for a hard working necker in the field, right? And then I built the sheath system for it that does all kinds of stuff. Tabby dangler, you can put a tech lock on it. You can wear it uh, IWB, you know, in the waistband with a ulti clip or whatever, right? Okay, so. That's out of the way, and I'm still sweating. <laughs> mm, that's terrible. I got this thing going on. Tell me if any of you guys have experienced this. Every few minutes, I smell something. But it's got to be in my head. It's, you know how like your brain allows you to smell something sometimes? Like some neurons, there it is right there. Oh my God. And I don't know what it is, right? I'm, it's vaguely familiar though. It makes me think of something, but I can't think of what it is. It's weird. So it might be a medication I'm on, I don't know. Anyway, any of you guys ever have that happen? Weird smells without any actual smells around? Um, okay, so first sheath system, okay? The knife. I hope I get it right, okay? The knife is a <laughs> LT right next gen with a convex grind, okay? Convex grind, looks like, uh, I don't know, A2, maybe O1. Eighth inch thick, 
beautiful knife. My Carter scales, just the right size for an EDC bushcrafter, right? So he bought one of these, and I tell you, <clears throat> a couple of these knives I purchased for him, right? And then I'm just going to build him for them. And some of them, I got this, uh, I got this thermocell going right now, right? And it works well because down here there's usually a lot of mosquitoes, and they were biting me up before, but they're not now. So anyway, that that was in my kayaking video. Check it out, right? It's a thermocell. Uh, you can buy them at Kmart. They work really well, and they're light. I mean, the thing only weighs a few ounces. Um, so here's the sheath system, Cryptic Mandrake and OD carbon fiber, OD green carbon fiber. Okay, there, there's the front. You guys know all the options by now. Fine diamond rod sharpener, ferro rod on the front, tabby dangler with a strong shore up plate, right? It's like three layers thick right here. It's <laughs> you break this, I'm in trouble, right? Uh, tech lock on the back, you know, and several different carries. There's like four or five different carries in this system right here. And we give you a lot. A lot of, a lot of carry options in one sheath. You know, most guys give you one or two. We like to build as many as we can into it, especially if you ask for it. Alright, so there's that one, okay? Give you a good look at it again. Cryptek Mandrake. And... OD green carbon fiber. It's starting to get dark out here, so I gotta hurry up a little bit. Okay? Um, some nice Herman Oak leather that we tool and skid, and uh, sometimes we even dye it ourselves. Okay, next system. Okay? This knife is the Bravo Survivor. The, uh, um, Bark River Bravo Survivor, beautiful knife, right? Um, if, if I was going to carry a big knife, it'd be something like this, right? Uh, A2 tool steel, it's a beautiful knife, uh, you know, well balanced, right? I'm supposed to say that, right? Well balanced. <laughs> um, so here's the front of it. This one, this is Baldrick Carry. This one's in Baldrick Carry and Tabby Dangler and molly lock and tech lock carry so like i don't know six different carries in this one sheet six i challenge anybody to come up with more carry systems in one sheet i challenge you guys other sheath makers i challenge you come up with more than six in one sheath system consistently i challenge you friendly challenge there it is Okay. It's got a SC tool pouch on the front, SC accessory pouch. Um, this one actually has a tin in it. Most of them do, right? Most of them we, we keep the tin in there. Some of them don't come with tins, uh, but these do. Um, then he's got the Phoenix E05 uh, E12. Phoenix E12 Tactical Light Assembly. Phoenix E12, and all I'm doing is lightly pressing the detent button in the back, and then when you want to turn it off, you press it all the way. Boom, done, right? You can use it in, you know, these are all left-handed. All these sheaths are left-handed. We don't make them that often, but these are all left-handed for the same guy. Um, so in Baldrick Carry, all he's got to do is point that beam where he wants it to go. If he wants to wear it in Tabby Dangler, all he's got to do is turn it around, put it in the other way, and he's got a tabby dangler uh, versatility there. And then you can also take it out and use it as a handheld flashlight, right? Got uh, shock cord retention in there very securely. Um, now, there should be a fine diamond rod sharpener here, okay? There's got to be a reason why we took it out. So Zach might have taken it out, I don't know. Um, but I have to remember to put one in there before it, before it leaves. There's your smells again. Boy, that is really weird. And it's a it's a really sick smell. Um, so there it is, right? 
This one has a Baldrick sling. He opted for a couple of them. Uh, and the Baldrick slings are made by Beachin Tactical at the Prepper's Bunker. Jacob Peterson, Beachin Tactical. Okay, I only use his because in my opinion, they're the best. They're just the best slings out there for several reasons. Um, okay, next one. This is uh, Topps Kukri 7.0. Tops Kukri 7.0. Tops Kukri 7.0. This thing's a beast, right? And I'll reiterate, when you put a big knife into any sheath, including Kydex, right? You have to be careful not to cock it one way or another, because if you slice that Kydex, it's gonna it's gonna create a slice there, right? And the next time you might slice it again and again and eventually you're going to cut through it right so be careful with especially big knives okay uh yeah anyway same thing as the other one that you just saw in different colors same type of sheath baldrick carry there's that okay they all got thumb ramps they're all taco style sheaths um, we're real particular about the weight of a sheath, too. Uh, that's one reason why I do not build pancake-style sheaths. The flat ones with eyelets on both sides of the blade, they're just too wide. In my opinion, they're just too wide, and I, I just don't build them, right? Because they, 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 they cause problems with me, you know? I want a sheath system to be as light as it can be, and tacos fit the build, all right? Uh, so I've been making them forever. Here's another one. This one is a pop top. That's what I call a pop top, right? See if I can use it, all right? So anyway, here's the sheath system. This is for the JX5. Chris Tanner, Bark River, JX5. And it's a pop top, right? You pop this button right here. Now, I usually don't use snaps, usually. In this case, I had to. Well, I didn't have to, but it helps hold it in, right? Pop it open, and you can pull this thing out, right? There it is, JX5, right? Then to put it back in, you just slide it back in. Snap it, it's a pull the dot, so it only snaps one way. You gotta, you gotta put it on like this, right? back first and then snap it down that's the only way it'll go on there <coughs> and the uh, piggyback knife is can't remember this might be the gen next gen this one might be the next gen um, the other one I don't know I, yeah. sometimes I get confused over his knives there's so many different knives I lose track of the names All right so it's an LT right On the front, it's got uh, a Phoenix E12 Tactical Hawk Light, Ferro Rod, Baldrick System, two Molly Locks on the back, and they're kind of canted, right, inward. So it, it just kind of, that's the way they lay, you know what I mean? Um, because I follow the lines of the sheath when I put uh, Molly Locks on, so... It kind of looks cool that way, I think. All right, so there's the back of it. Fine diamond rod sharpener on the side. This is um, Crazy Cam or something. Hex Cam Super something. I can't, I don't remember. Super Hex Cam. That's what I call it, right? Super Hex Cam. Comes in three different uh, color patterns. Okay, and then a beaching tactical sling for this one. Okay, so there's that one. <laughs> this is the Mash Axe, right? The BK4 Mash Axe. Machete Axe Mash Axe. Mash Axe. Mash Axe. Right? That's the knife. Um, 
I don't, if I'm not mistaken, I purchased this, and he's just going to reimburse me. Um, you know, he's in the Philippines, so I make some, I make some allowances for people who are overseas and stuff like that. Um, because they can't, sometimes they can't get this stuff, right? Um, so, that's the accessory pouch on the front, Baldrick carry. It's got a tabby D-ring. It's not a tabby dangler, it's just a tabby D-ring, right? That you clip Baldrick uh, sling into. The reason why it's all the way up here, most guys put them right here, the loops. Um, I've learned that when they're up here, it just rides better. So I had to figure out a way to encompass several different things in one assembly. The tabby dangler is it. Right? So there's that one. This is um, Tactical Black and Cryptek Typhon. Cryptek Typhon. <clears throat> There it is. There is a tin in this pouch too. There's that. This one is the SXB 10. The SXB 10. Okay. Um, now a couple of these Zach built, right? I helped him a little bit, but for the most part he built it like this one. He built this one. <clears throat> I think he did a great job, right? So here's the tops SXB. Um, I'm going to come out and say it, I just don't like it. Uh, it's just not my kind of blade. But, for guys who like this stuff, have at it, man. It's cool looking. <laughs> right? I call this dirty red, and the main sheath is black brick pattern. That black tactical brick pattern. These, I tell you, this pattern is what the, uh, the Spec Ops guys go for a lot, right? As soon as I show it to them, they're like, yeah, that's what I want. That is badass, right? So they love it. Okay, so there's that. There's the back, right? And then uh, Patriot. This is a LT Wright Patriot. And then his ferro rods on the front. You can put any ferro rod you want in it. This is a 3 8 inch holder. So I made a few of these 3 8 inch because you can fit our ferro rods in them too. So you, not only can you fit your, your uh, Swiss Army or your, uh, your Army model, you know, the 3 8 inch Army model in there. There's another one too. Anyway, you can fit ours in there too. So Fine diamond rod sharpener on the side. Uh, you see the holes on this one real clearly on the side for a molly lock. And you can put one on this side too. All he has to do is take the tech lock off. There's that one. Okay. Um, all these have tooling on the leather. And then last but not least, this is the first one we built. Zach built this one too, right? This is the first one that we built out of this series. Another one for the mash axe. Right? He wanted two of them. So, and he wanted two knives. So there it is. And there's an LT Wright Pygmy. <laughs> it's not the Pygmy, huh? <laughs> LT Wright Pygmy. <laughs> Alright? This is also um, Cryptek Typhon. And this is Black Raptor. Black Raptor. It's getting dark. I don't know if you can see it. Black Raptor. Um, got a standard compass on it. I don't think he asked for a compass on this one. We gave him one of our standard ones. Um, he does get, on a couple of these, he does get Sunto compasses. But I was out of them. And I, we just got them in today. So I'll, I'll be outfitting them before they go. Um, that's it. Uh, you guys want to hear retention, don't you? So let's just let's just pick one for retention, right? Right? Ready? Oh, that is badass. Listen, that's tough. That is tough. 
See what we got with this one. Mm. This is the SXB. Bam, right? Let's see if we can let me pull it out. I just want to get it to where I can. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> That's just badass. Here's another one. There's that smell again. I just don't understand it. Right? No rock, no rhythm, no roll, no rattle, no play. Um, we really do have a different way of molding the sheath to the to the knife that allows us to get them really snug, right? So it's different than the way most guys are doing it, right? Um, so hmm, that's it, right? These are going. Let me back it up, show it to you again. One last look. Pick up this. No mosquitoes. I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed with that thing. Really impressed. This is Multicam 093 Multicam. This is Cryptek Highlander Coyote Brown. And the rest of them, you know, I already said what they are, right? We got Black and Cryptek Typhon, Black Raptor and Cryptek Typhon, Black Brick and Dirty Red. That's a special color. I have to order it special, right? Um, the, most of the supply houses do not have it. I have to get it from somebody else. All right, so there it is. All right, guys. Let me put this tripod back down. I gotta find a different way of doing this. All right. Anyway, guys, this is Doug Wilson, Yellow Hawk Customs, outdoors. Because we are, we're outdoors right now, right? Right. See ya! Now, I wanna kinda stick something in here in this video. Um, when you're looking at our website or you see any of our sheath systems, and they are their sheath systems everything works together as a system with the knife and basically it just increases your capabilities in the field right you got fire tinder you got a light you got a tin you got a pouch you got a compass all kinds of stuff you got a diamond rod you got a strop right all the tabby danglers take them off use them as a strop it's, it's leather right they work well put some compound on them use it as a strop put it back on um, now that's if you really need it, right? I carry, uh, I carry, you know, straps out into the field with me, just pieces of leather with compound on them, and a diamond rod sharpener, just like uh, you see on the sheath systems. And that's what I use to sharpen my knives in the field. Most of the time, I just strop them. Sometimes that diamond rod comes off of there, and I, I do. I put a little bit of bite on it and then I polish it off right and I get hair popping results so not hard just needs practice a little that's all all right so any one of these sheath systems can be built for your knife right as long as it's around the same size as the the knife you see in the sheath but even if it's not we can modify it now you wouldn't put a five inch blade in one of those big behemoths, right? You just wouldn't do it. So you gotta use your head here and just say, you know, I got a five inch blade. I'm not gonna be able to put, he's not gonna be able to build that exact system that he's got a nine inch blade in right now. Cause my blade's not long enough, right? All right guys, that's it. Thanks. Thanks again. See ya. Bye. Arrivederci.